Hello and uh, welcome. We are very happy that you could be with us. And uh, I am very happy to say that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Something that no man can say but by the power of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 3. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about the parable of the fig tree. We hear that we live in the end times and we see a lot of stuff happening around us and it's natural for us to say what is going on and what is happening to the world and we get full of questions. And the Lord knew that this time would come and he warned us and he said that in the end days knowledge will increase. And we can see that we are getting very wise and we are getting very knowledgeable in many things. When the Lord was here, he said that he came to fulfill scripture and he fulfilled the scriptures of the Old Testament. Today, we have a bunch of scriptures, for example, in the book of Revelation that we are waiting to be fulfilled. And we always have a bunch of people that wonders, where are we in the book of Revelation? And we try to figure that out. And in our last show, we talked about why that is. Very often, people have not done what is necessary to prepare themselves for the wedding. They haven't put on their wedding gowns. And they still think they have time to wait. And they're trying to figure out where we are in the book of Revelation so that they will be given enough time to put on their gowns to make themselves ready. Now, we are going to talk about the parable of the fig tree. And as we see knowledge increase, we find that we are saved by grace through faith. And we are measured by our faith. And there is no works allowed in the court of God, but by the perfect works of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are therefore measured by our faith. Now, Paul says, that which we can see, why do we yet hope for? As in, we don't need faith because faith is the bridge between the unseen and the seen. We know that the seen is temporal and we know that the unseen is eternal. So as we see scripture coming to pass, we know that our brothers and sisters that lived prior to us, they couldn't see the things that we see. They couldn't see that the Bible was true. They had to take it face value and they had to believe it by faith. As we see Bible verses coming to pass, we can now prove them. We can now use science, we can now use Google and we can use other means to prove that what the Bible talked about all along is true. Those verses that has come to pass no longer requires our faith. They fall away. They are like figs falling from the fig tree. It is like if the Bible were the fig tree and the verses coming to pass are the figs that has now outlived their purpose. There is no longer any faith needed because we can see for ourselves. So this fig is now falling to the ground. And as we see that knowledge increases, and as we see that more questions that we could only answer by faith is now being answered by science and knowledge, we know that the Bible was right and we are waiting for the Lord. We are in a stage of waiting. We are waiting for him to reveal himself and he reveals himself through making scripture come to pass. The parable of the fig tree tells us that when we see the figs falling, we know time is at hand. And when we see end time scriptures coming to pass, falling to the ground like figs and we no longer need any faith to believe in them we can simply look around us that is when we know the time is short that means that if you have been wondering where we are in the book of revelation let me tell you right now 
you are at the stage in the book of Revelation where you need to put on your wedding gown right now. Time is now. This is the moment that you've been waiting for. This is the moment that you've been going to church for. This is the moment that you've been studying for. This is the moment that you've been waiting for when you asked, where are we? We are at that moment. That being said, the mystery that was revealed to Paul was that you have Christ in you. And we also know that the spirit of prophecy is the spirit of Christ. So there is no true prophecy outside of him. Many people is waiting for the two witnesses. Many people is waiting for the prophet Elijah to come and pave a way for the Lord. There is no other spirit but the spirit of Christ, and the spirit of Christ is here today. The kingdom has been in effect for a long time. The rules that we have all enjoyed in this reality has been the rules that has been put in place ever since grace was established. We have all enjoyed a period of time where sin was not imputed onto us. We didn't suffer the consequences for our actions immediately. We stored up for ourselves for the time of judgment. According to scripture, that is about to change. Some people is going to return to the law and they're going to have to suffer the consequences for their sins and the one that is mentioned in the Bible as the destroyer, the one that has many names, some call him Samuel, Samael and other things, the one that creates stumbling blocks. And when the stumbling block or the trap has been sprung, it's the very same that comes to punish the ones. So he makes the traps and he also punishes them. That is how those that are being judged by the law will suffer the consequences of their actions immediately and the window of grace is slowly closing. And as we can see it, the figs are falling to the ground and the figs are the Bible verses coming to pass. And as we see the world changing into what the Bible promised us it would, we know that time is short. Time is now. I have with me today, Christy. And uh, Christy knows as well that time is short, and that's what we are going to talk about today. So, Christy, are you here with us? Yes, I'm here. How are you doing, Shetiel? Oh, I'm doing just good. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, uh, the spirit of prophecy. We know that in the end times, the spirit is going to be shed abroad amongst all flesh. We know that old men is going to have dreams, we're going to have prophecies, we're going to have all of the gifts of the Spirit coming back into the world. And as we see the great falling away and more and more people is leaving our faith, those of us that are left and remain, our powers increases. And we will see that the fullness of the Gentiles is about to come in and as we become fewer and fewer, we hold on to that marvelous, glorious hope of redemption that we've been given. And as that happens, our powers grow. And we are here to remind you of who you are and that you were sent for a reason. And nobody lives in the end days unless it was absolutely planned out from the Creator. And aren't you curious to what that plan is? Yes. I am. It's like I wake up in a new world every day, discovering new things around me through reading the scriptures, you know, and I haven't stopped reading them and I'm not going to. That's the thing. I'm not going to stop because it fuels me. It gives me power. It gives me comfort. It gives me everything that I absolutely need. Nothing in this world I'm missing. Not one thing. And when I went to the store today, and I told those two people, you know, there's power in prayer. Yeah, you uh, you went to the store today, and you met two people that uh, was fearful, and they portrayed their fear by covering their faces with a device that they believed would protect them from danger. And... Um, you picked up on that signal, and uh, you went over to them, and you confronted them on their fear and asked them why they were wearing that device on their face where they replied that it was out of fear because they thought it would protect them 
and then you inform them about who actually is the one that maintains all things and who they need to serve in order to get protection. Mm -hmm. Just tell, tell us a little bit about what happened there and, uh, and how you got to be a, a witness for the truth. So I went into the store, I had to do, run a few little errands today, and this two people, they walked in kind of at the same time I was, and they were both wearing masks. And here we are three years in, and we know that that bioweapon and all that stuff and the masks don't work right. It actually just makes you sick. And it was just bothering me, and it kept bothering me and bothering me, and it was nudging me. I had to say something to him. And I said, hey, I said, hey. I said, hey, why are you wearing that mask? She said, oh, because, you know, my family's been sick and uh, we don't want to get COVID. I said, COVID's not real. Well, all of, like all of these, we are on YouTube as well. So um, we are really watching our language, aren't we? So we are talking about the device that covers the face and we're talking about different, we don't use the words because we don't want to get in fragments. Did I say the words? Yes, I'm trying you are so using, hard. Yes, we are talking a little bit in codes there and, I, and mm. we've got to remind ourselves that we don't use the words because we just what had... What words did I say? Well, I won't repeat them, but we had... Uh, we had a week's uh, block from uh, YouTube because we didn't um, use the proper language. So I'm coming in here just to uh, I don't remind even know us. what I said. Okay, so we were talking about two people that were fearful and they, I demonst knew that, but they I demonstrated don't know what their fear be because they had a device on their face that they thought would protect them. Mm -hmm. That's what you said, that what they were fearful of wasn't even real, you said. So you said, ah, oh, that's not even real. And then continue your story, please. Let's just keep it all like that. <laughs> He's the director. So uh, I'm not going to go all into it because I already put it on um, the other little Twitter. So I'm just going to kind of go to what how they were acting whenever I was talking to them. Because I was some, look, I, look, some stranger came up, came up to these two people wearing these things. And wanted to know why, and they were scared. And I said, well, God didn't give us that fear. He didn't give it to us. The God of destruction, the God of this world did. And we got to go talking all about, and their their eyes are getting big. And they said, oh, I'm just so scared. And I said, well, we don't have that, we don't have that fear. So I got to minister to them. And when they finally got to leave, because I was talking, we ended up on, back on the same aisle, because they ended up going where I needed to go. And they had said, oh, God, here she comes. And they said, God, which is okay. And I said, oh, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. And so it was just very interesting that I actually went in there thinking I was going to do something. And I literally went in there and my mouth just, just wouldn't stop. It's just, I just couldn't leave these two people alone. And it wasn't like that I was like following them around or being like a stalker. You know, know the, all about that. Right. And it's like I actually went on to uh, the Anointed Names uh, Twitter page where she has a video where she sort of explains the story exactly like it happened immediately after. She has a little video there. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that you said in that video was that um, those uh, people, they actually came to that, well, we are protected by the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. so we don't really need any other protection. And they sort of started reflecting on who do we fear? That's right. The Lord Jesus Christ said, you have one person or one entity to fear, and that is the Father, because he can kill you twice. And all other fears that you have, don't be deceived. You need to fear him that can put you in that danger. Don't fear the danger. Right? Yeah, don't fear the danger itself. Right. Because so who fear you him there? that can put you there. Yeah. Amen. So. And you made them absolutely aware that mm -hmm. they were fearing the wrong thing. Yes. Because if we fear anything but the Father himself, then we are deceived because, remember this, nobody takes a breath unless the Father says okay. That's so right. that means that there is no danger happening to anybody unless the Father says okay. So let's hope that he doesn't. And that's what we need to worry about. Amen? Amen. So let, let us put the fear where it needs to be. So when I saw those things on their face, I was talking to them a little bit, and then I had to ask them, I go, do you know Jesus? Well, yes. I said, okay. I said, can you put 1 Corinthians 12, 3 in your mouth? Yes, but I don't know if she knew it. I, and he had his phone, and he was doing stuff. I think he was, he was looking up stuff that I was saying. 
And I, I told him, I go, oh, please do. Please do. And um, I go, go on and um, look up that verse. And he was just like this. And she was like this. And I said, I hope I'm not scaring you, but I am a messenger coming here in here to tell y'all to because y'all are very loved. And then I went on about my business. And then here we are. So praise God. Well, that's uh, that is one of the things that is uh, absolutely amazing. Um, we have uh, spent a lot of time in this series talking about the duality. And one of the things that is very important to understand when we talk about duality is what psychology would call cognitive dissonance. And cognitive dissonance is when we try to hold two beliefs that is opposing each other in our minds at the same time and those two beliefs are sort of warring it out between themselves because as human beings we only like to have one that means that one must yield for the other and until we have settled that score inside of us um, living with two realities and mixing between them causes anxiety and fear and it is a condition that is very complicated, but is very well known in psychology. Since all of us are in a form of duality, we are two united in one body, right? The Bible teaches us that. Then we naturally must always be in a state of double-mindedness. And the Bible talks a lot about what it means to be double-minded and that as long as we are double-minded, we will be wishy-washy and we will not be able to be determined and we will not be able to be relentless and we will not be able to pursue something uh, further than a certain amount before our doubts come in and sort of we change path. And we know that in order to make ourselves approved unto God, we need to stick to one street and we need to exhaust our own resources to the point where we are willing to give up and it's when we give up that the lord comes in and does what is impossible for us right and we all have these experiences throughout our life but knowing that we have this conflict going on inside of us and knowing that as long as that conflict is not settled we become unfruitful and we will not become what is called useful to the Lord because we are always scared of making mistakes. And settling this insecurity within ourselves is extremely important. And as we see the figs falling to the ground and as we see time is shortening down, imagine that you have this dress or this outfit that you want to put on but you can't get it on because your arm gets stuck or something. So you're sitting there struggling to put on this wedding gown. And that is what this is about, this duality between us. We need to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling because it truly is fear and trembling to go through cognitive dissonance and trust in the Lord so much that we are willing to go with one of the elements within ourselves and let the other one just sail. And just all of the worries and all of the threats that comes from not pursuing that other thing and maintaining it, we give it all to the Lord and we trust in Him and we just stand on that one decision that we have. We must get to that point. And that is the challenge of being a human being. We have this duality in us. One element of us wants to do good, says Paul, and the other elements of us wants to do evil. And since we believe that we are judged by our actions and not by our faith, we get trapped in it. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about now. Faith versus works. So, Christy, mm -hmm. we know that in us there is no good thing. That's right. What we do know is that we all have two eyes to see what is going on in the world. But what we don't know, because we're not taught in school, is that we have an eye on the inside. It's mm -hmm. called the pineal gland. Mm -hmm. It is shaped just like an eye, but oddly enough, it stares downwards. It doesn't look out, it doesn't look up, it looks down. 
What is it that we have inside of our body below our head that it can look at? Well, the Bible teaches us that we have a heart and in our heart there is a fire and fire is perceived as light. Mm -hmm. We know that the eye is sensitive to light and if our eye is darkened, says the Bible, our entire body is darkened. But if we have the Spirit of God living in our hearts, we have fire in our hearts, and our inner eye will start perceiving that light, and it will start to emanate that light and translate it through our nervous system, and it will enlighten our entire body and give us a purpose and a mission. If we were to create some sort of pharmacia, some sort of witchcraft, sorcery, whatever we want to call it, that was capable of blinding the eye so that it no longer could see, so that it didn't matter if it was fire, fire in the heart, it could not be translated, then that person would be left in darkness and would be considered utterly blind. And maybe if that was something that mankind had been suffering, then maybe we could understand the darkness in the world and the negative behaviors. And maybe we could also understand that there is an entity or a group of entities that must have known this because a lot of the things that has been done has been actively aimed at closing the inner eye. That's right. And we don't control the inner eye, apparently. It sort of sees what our heart is full of. So whatever our heart is full of, the mouth runs over with, says the Bible, because the inner eye cannot help but seeing what the heart is full of. So mm -hmm. whatever your heart is full of is what the inner eye will project into your nervous system, and that is the life that you will live out. Today, science is able to prove all of this. Today, science is able to show us in detail that this is how it all works and this is how it is all connected. That means that we no longer need faith in order to explain these things. That means that all of that which was written in the Bible, we can tear out those pages because there is no need for faith. We can prove it by science and still people won't believe it. That's fine. I don't care about that. But we don't no longer need faith to believe it. Science already knows. Mm -hmm. So the amount of Bible we have left that is not yet fulfilled, where Jesus said that the knowledge will increase in the last days, mm -hmm. so that faith will not be needed, knowledge will replace it. And that is what we're seeing. So the window of grace is slowly but surely shutting down with rapid speed. Mm -hmm. And if you are getting a revelation from the Lord, where the Lord suddenly one day shows you how something works, and then you suddenly get a complete understanding of how it works and everything becomes logic and visible to you, mm -hmm. then there is no more faith needed in that area. And yet another fig has fallen to the ground. Mm -hmm. If you're a member of the body of Christ and you get these visions and revelations and these understandings, then you are part of the fig tree and you are part of making the Lord reveal himself because when all of the figs and all of the leaves are off of the tree we will see it as it is that's right this has been uh, a short message from us in the barn we bless you and we thank you for having followed us and if you are interested in helping this ministry in any way you can reach us and find us on our homepage at allisoneministry.com and we pray that the fire in your heart will go through your inner eye and fill your entire body with light and that you will be a light to all of the people around you and that you will trust that what God has given you is enough. You have been equipped, you are enough and this is how God did it. Take care and go in peace.